Before we can start to explain in detail how authentication modules works, we have to answer one single and important question. What is an authentication module? And this is what we try to do here. As you can see and have seen before, there is something in the identity manager that is called the system user. A system user is something like an identity manager account. With the help of a system user, you can get access to the one identity manager. And this is similar to all the other systems. As you know, even if you want to have access, you need first an account. This account will have entitlements and with the help of these entitlements, you will get permissions in the specific system. In the identity manager, this way exists as well. We call it system user. In difference to other systems, we decided that it makes no sense to just have one of these system users per user in a company. Remember, identity manager manage identities even for huge companies. And if there are 250,000 users somewhere, we don't want to have in our database 250,000 system users just to ensure that people can work with the identity manager. To do so, we do something like all the others are doing as well. You may know that from the cloud. In the cloud, you can have alliances between different systems. And for example, if you want to log in by Samsung, you can do that with your Google account or with your Facebook account. In the same way, a little bit, the identity manager acts as well. You can define a way that people get their permissions without having an account in the identity manager. In this way, how to define it to get permissions this is what we name authentication modules. Each of these authentication modules describe just another way to get the permissions at the end in the identity manager and could be used for different purpose. Out of the box, there's only a few of these authentication modules just enabled, but there are some more in the database could easily be enabled and be used depending on the use case for your customer and in your project. Before we start to get into details, we should talk about how to read the diagrams we'll see in seconds. And this is what this overview shows, the ways of authentications. We talk about authentication modules and on the very left hand side, you can see the input, the front end or the one identity manager gets. That could be a login mask, which is the easiest way to enter something. That could as well be something you get from the operating system. For example, if you logged in on your workstation, it's easy to figure out in which domain and with which account you are just connected. This information could be just passed through the one identity manager. The identity manager can take this information and then he can consider it later on in the authentication module. This is the left side and the orange cloud there. On the very right hand side, there is the dark blue cloud and the dark blue cloud says this is the one identity manager permission set. Whatever it is, we will discuss it in part number two of this video series. And at present, we only say this is a cloud of permissions you can get in one identity manager, whatever it is, but we have to assign it to permission objects. And this is the lighter blue part on the right hand side. There are the permission groups. Permission groups hold all these entitlements, these permission entitlements in Identity Manager. Permission groups can as well be assigned on the one hand side to system users and system users are something like a one Identity Manager account and on the other hand side as well to application roles, which is the management object in Identity Manager to handle one Identity Manager permissions. The green stuff in the middle, these are now the business objects. We can assign system users to business objects either than permission groups. Permission groups, as mentioned, can be assigned to application roles and system users can be assigned to people, that means to identities, the person object we say in Identity Manager, or they can as well be assigned to accounts in a very specific kind of way. Whatever, all of these ways are now described in the following details and we will talk about the different ways to get away through the authentication module in Identity Manager. The first thing you should know about is where you can configure authenticators. Therefore, you need a logging mask. This is the logging mask of a manager. To get access to this specific manager, the first thing what you should do is to select the authentication method directly here in the dialog. As you can see, to be used with a the manager, there are around about six authentication modules activated. I select, for example, the role-based authenticator for identities. That means employee role-based. And with that, I have to know that in my users field, I have now to type in my central account name, which is Hervik ABE. 
with that. And typically a password, which is not configured in this database because I'm a lazy person, I can just click on connect and I get signed in into this specific managers. At present, I get only the permissions Mr. Herwig Abele already has. Now let's talk about where you can configure authenticators. Therefore, I switch to designer. In designer, there is the base data section and in the base data section, you can find as well the filter authenticators. And in the filter authenticators, you will find the list of all existing authenticators. As mentioned, there are Active Directory based ones, there are identity based ones, there are HTTP header based ones, there are OAuth2 based ones, and so on. To activate one of them, for example, this one, which is not activated, you have to go to the properties. And in the properties, you can just activate this authenticators with a double click. And once it is activated and the database is stored, you can just start using it. A lot of people just like to activate everything because they just think then they have all capabilities. In reality, this is not really helpful. Remember, even data administrators sometimes have to use or select authenticators. If there is a selection out of 20, it's much more worse than just to select out of two or three. So you should always only activate authenticators you already need. To do that, we saw we have just to activate the enable flag. 